Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me again today for story time with Rob. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me, where do you come up with a lot of these stories? Well, I can tell you that I've collected stories ever since I was in high school. I just love short stories. I used to devour the old Reader's Digest books that used to come out. I love the little short stories that were in those. But um, a lot of the stories are my own. Um, many of these come from, uh, I don't know if you remember, the most famous broadcaster, in my opinion, that ever walked the planet was uh, Paul Harvey. And he used to do uh, the rest of the story uh, a couple of times a week. And we used to just couldn't wait to hear those. And so some many of the stories come from that. So I uh, appreciate you joining me, and I hope you enjoy this one. This one is uh, something that every one of you, I guarantee, should know. But uh, we'll go from here and see how you do. This is called Dr. Pemberton's Pick-Me-Up. In the first place, Dr. Pemberton wasn't even a doctor. But who'd trust a product called Mr. Pemberton's Tripec, Triplex Liver Pills? No one. Therefore, he called it Dr. Pemberton's Globe of Flower Cough Syrup and Dr. Pemberton's Extract of Stillinger Blood Medicine. I don't know who would try any of those anyway with names like that. But if Dr. Pemberton wasn't a doctor, he also wasn't a quack. He merely lived in an era, era right after the Civil War when the corner druggist knew as much about medicines as the national drug manufacturers at that time. And that's just what John Pemberton was. He was a corner druggist. It was sometime after moving his business from Columbus to Atlanta, some while after Dr. Pemberton's Indian Queen hair dye, that this obscure Georgia pharmacist started fiddling with a basement brew you'll want to know about. Most patent medicines in those days contained alcohol. None of that in John Pemberton's new concoction. In fact, according to some, he was trying to effect a headache cure or perhaps a hangover cure for the other patent medicines. John experimented with the extracts of fruit and nuts and leaves but that was for taste merely. If he was going to cure a headache, he'd need perhaps a stimulant, yes, caffeine, and some say cocaine. Now it was all over but the selling, but John, who had spent most of his time developing this new pick-me-up, would need financial help. So during the summer of 1886, Dr. Pemberton took a jug of the reddish-brown syrup to Jacob's Pharmacy, one of the most reputable in Atlanta. What was in it, the manager wanted to know. Ah, Dr. Pemberton explained that it was a secret, but the manager would try, should try some. Just mix with water and drink. Well, Jacob's bought Pemberton's potions, advertised it too. But sales were slow. Apparently, Georgians were quite free of aches and pains that summer. That's when state fate stumbled in. The story goes that a customer came into the pharmacy one morning with a hangover. The clerk remembered Dr. Pemberton's stirrup and went to mix some. He was new on the job, not yet acquainted with the procedure, and used carbonated water by mistake. His mistake is still in the recipe today. Any cocaine in the original creation has long since been eliminated. So it may or may not cure your headache. The other ingredients remain basically all the same. Dr. Pemberton, the master of cures, could not cure himself, however, his health failed soon after that last discovery. The little business he built around it could have been bought for less than $2,000 when he died. 
So the country druggist never shared the pot of gold at the end of what is now a rainbow of lights as wide as the world spelling out Coca-Cola. And now you know the rest of the story. Now I've <clears throat> traveled many places around the world with my wife and I will tell you that it, this is probably one of the biggest world products in the history of products. No matter where you go, we, we landed in Peru once, first thing you see at the airport is massive billboards uh, with Coca-Cola on them. Um, <clears throat> not only that, but we went to Cambodia and Europe a few times. Coca-Cola is everywhere. I even lived in Africa for a short while and I used to, uh, funny story, I used to, to uh, admire the uh, African women who would walk down the streets and they always put strange objects on their head when they walked. They didn't like carrying things, so they just carried them on their heads. And some of those were massive, huge things, and some of them were small, but um, a couple of crazy ones that I saw have to do with this. One, there was a, a lady who was walking down the street and she had a big, huge ball of yarn on top of her head and she was knitting while she was walking and it was just running right down. But the funny one was uh, <clears throat> there was a lady walking down the street. She had absolutely nothing in her hands. She wasn't holding any bags or anything. And she had a huge two liter bottle of Coca-Cola on top of her head as she walked. And I just thought that was awesome. Well, thank you again for joining me today. And until tomorrow, be safe.